Exodus chapter 12 verse 13. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live, and when I see the blood I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This is the word of God. Amen. Hello, Shalom. It's nice to meet you. My hairs are messy, isn't it? <laughs> Today's message is three types of seals. As you, you all know, today is 73rd anniversary of the outbreak of Korean War. Much blood has been shed and the country has been completely devastated. However, through the grace of God, the world unite and fought against communism to protect Korea. The same situation is currently unfolding in Ukraine, Russian war. At today, Russia was on the blink of a civil war but it narrowly avoided it. Jesus said in Mark chapter 13, verse 8, For nation will arise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. As we live in the, the end times, we need God's protection. Therefore, we must receive the three seals of God. At this time, we will share the grace of the word under the title of three types of seals. The Israelites were in Egypt for 430 years and they were slaves there. Through Moses, they came out of Egypt and were in the wilderness for 40 years before they entered Canaan. This is the outer meaning of the history of Israelites. Through this history, God wants to teach us the inner meaning. As we know, it, Egypt symbolized the fallen world. The wilderness is the church and Canaan is the kingdom of God. Revelation 11, 8, and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which mystically is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Egypt is the fallen world. And Acts 7, 38, this is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness together with the angel who was speaking to him on Mount Sinai and who was with our fathers and he received living oracles to pass on to you. The congregation in the wilderness the church is the wilderness. When the Israelites traveled from Egypt to Canaan, there were three types of seals. If you have these three types of seals, you will live, but if you don't, then you will die. So, when we are out in the world and going through the process of reaching transfiguration, we need these three seals in our church life. Point one, first seal, blood of the lamb. This was the blood of the lamb before leaving Egypt. To, pro to protect the firstborn child from dying, people had to brush the blood of a lamb on their house's doorpost. When the angel of death saw the blood on the door, they would pass by without harm. However, if there was no blood on the lamb on the door, 
the firstborn child would die. So, the blood acts like a seal protecting the people. Without the seal of the blood on the doorpost, both people and animals would die. We see Egypt as a symbol of the world we live in. If we want, if we want to go to heaven and be saved from the world, we also need the blood of the Lamb. Who is this Lamb? He is Jesus Christ. John 1, 29. The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus carries the sins of all mankind. First Corinthians 5, 7. Clean out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. For Christ, our Passover, also has been sacrificed. Christ is our Passover lamb. So, the blood of the lamb shows that Jesus would have to shed blood on the cross. They had to catch the lamb and bring it on January 10th. And in, it had to be killed on January 14th, not before. So there are five days until the lamb is killed. This is the time when they examine the lamb. First, they choose the best lamb and inspect its fur. Looking for any skin disease, blindness, lameness, or scars. The lamb must be flawless and perfect. So it goes through an inspection that can make it tired. For example, sometimes we have to visit the doctors for a thorough checkup. And during the preparation time, we can feel tired and unwell. We have to check urines or our blood or take uh, x-ray pictures, etc. So these five days is the suffering week of Jesus before he was crucified. Jesus entered Jerusalem on Sunday. Jesus went through suffering from Monday until Friday. And we refer to this time as the suffering week. So, the inspection period of the Lamb is the symbol of Jesus' suffering week. Exodus 12, 3. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, they are each one to take a lamb for themselves. According to their father's household, a lamb for each household. And Exodus 12, 7 and 12, 6. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to kill it at twilight. So, the lamb was selected on January 10th and had to be kept until January 14th when it was killed at twilight. Twilight for Israelites is 3 p.m. our time. Jesus also died at 3 p.m. So, the lamb being killed at twilight was a prophecy that Jesus would also be killed at twilight. And this prophecy has come true. Matthew 27, 46, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? 
In the English Bible, it, say, it says, Jesus was crucified at the ninth hour. According to Jewish time, the time difference is this corresponds to three o'clock in the afternoon. To calculate the time differences, just add six hours ahead. So nine plus six is 15. It means 3 p.m. Jesus was also crucified during the Passover on January 14th. So the Old Testament fulfills the New Testament. That is why 1 Corinthians says that Jesus is the Passover lamb. The blood of the lamb means the seals of Jesus Christ. This is the seal of Son of God. So, when we leave the world, we must receive this seal. When you believe in him, you have received this seal. Exodus 12, 13. And the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy when I strike, strike the land of Egypt. The sign in Hebrew pronounce it as oath or oath, which means seal. When making a contract, people in Western countries usually sign it, usually sign it, but in Eastern countries, they often use a seal, like a stamp. So when you believe in Jesus Christ, God recognizes us as his children and he is telling us that he knows us. Second Timothy 2.19 Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of the Lord abstain from weakness. Our seal is that God knows those who are his. Once we have the blood of the Lamb, God recognizes us and accepts us. Point two, the second seal, Sabbath. After the Israelites left Egypt, they needed the Sabbath seal to pass through the wilderness. We also need the Sabbath in our church life. But nowadays, we refer to it as the Lord's Day, and it is celebrated on Sundays. Exodus 31, 13. But as for you, speak to the sons of Israel, saying, You shall surely observe my Sabbaths. For this is a sign between me and you. It is a sign between me and the sons of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he ceased from labor and was refreshed. And Ezekiel 20, 12. And also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. And Ezekiel 2020, and sanctify my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. Here, every word says, a sign is ought like a seal. So the second seal is the Sabbath. You need the first seal to leave Egypt and the second seal to pass through the wilderness. When the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt, they were not allowed to observe the Sabbath day because slaves 
were expected to work without rest. They were not allowed to take a day off to worship God, and the Sabbath law prohibited them from working on that day. That's why they couldn't practice the Sabbath in Egypt. But it also means that we have continued to live as sinners in Egypt, the fallen world. God will not accept our worship if we still live in fallen world. Adam and Eve fell and become sinners. God commanded Adam's sons, not Adam himself, to offer a sacrifice to God because Adam has sinned. When we, when we leave Egypt, it means we are leaving the world behind and transitioning from being slaves to sin to become God's children. As God's saved children, it is only natural for us to worship the Father because he rescued us from sin. So the Sabbath day is a reminder that God recognizes us, we can now worship him. So it is natural to us and necessary to worship God on Sunday. It is important to pay attention to our hearts. Our hearts can in two different ways. Firstly, as the foundation of life. Proverbs 4.23 Watch over your heart with a diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Spring of life means that our heart is like a source from which our actions and words flow. If our heart is filled with life, it overflows with goodness and positivity. But sometimes, our heart can become a place where negativity and corruption dwell, making it rotten and corrupted. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? The heart is deceitful and weak. There is a saying that goes, it all depends on your heart. The heart can be deceitful and weak. So if we use our heart correctly, it brings forth life. But if we use it incorrectly, it becomes corrupted and sick. It all comes down to how, how we use our heart. For example, there is a story. Once upon a time, there was a family who lived happily in a small house in Poland. It's a Jewish folk tale. They were excited because their grandparents were coming to live with them. But the parents worried because their house was already very small. They knew that when the grandparents arrived, it would become crowded and noisy. The father went to ask their, wish, their wise rabbi for advice. The rabbi said, let them come. So the, so the grandparents moved in and the house become even more crowded. The father went back to the rabbi saying, it's really crowded in the house now. The rabbi thought for a moment and asked, do you have chickens? The father said, yes. The rabbi told him to bring the chickens into the house. The father didn't understand, but he trusted the rabbi 
and did as he said. Now, with the chickens inside, it became even more crowded and noisy. The father went back to the rabbi, frustrated. The rabbi then asked, do you have any goats? And after that, he asked, do you have any sheep? So at finally, the house is being chaos and all messy. The father, the father come again to Rabbi and ask, he can't stand it anymore. So Rabbi said to him, let every sheep and cows, chickens move out from your house. Then they were grateful for the wise advice of the rabbi. So without the animals, the house became quiet, spacious, and comfortable. The family realized that their small house was now the most peaceful and pleasant place to be. Sometimes things can get better by removing what's making them worse. So it all depends on your heart or your mind. And we need to understand that we are children of our father. Our father owns everything in this world and he can provide us with all we need. When we understand this, we can feel more self-assured and proud of ourselves. We should have greater certainty and confidence in our spiritual journey because our Heavenly Father is always by our side. If you keep the Sabbath day, you will be blessed because Jesus himself gave blessings on that day. Nowadays, Sunday is known as the Lord's Day for us. It is important to take care of our Sundays because we can receive blessings. On the calendar, Sunday is always marked in lead. Just like when you drive and encounter a lead traffic light, if you refuse to stop, you may end up in an accident. Even if there's no accident, you might get caught by police eventually. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, 1 to 3. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their host. And by the seventh day, God completed his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. God rested on the seventh day. So, focus on Sunday for God. The blood of the Lamb means seal of Son of God. The Sabbath day means seal of the Holy Spirit. As we journey through our church life, moving from Egypt to the wilderness and eventually to Canaan, we require the seal of the Holy Spirit. The Sabbath represents the shadow of the Holy Spirit. Sunday is the day when Jesus saved us and made all things new through his death and resurrection. It is also the day when the Holy Spirit who brings this salvation and renewal to each of us came. We should make Sunday special and dedicate it to worship God. In him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, 
the gospel of your salvation. Having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. So it means that until transfiguration, God's Spirit will protect us. Point three, the third seal, red cord. This is the seal when we enter the land of Jericho. When the Israelites arrived in Canaan, their first target was the city of Jericho. Before attacking, they sent two spies to gather information. The spies were discovered and sought refuge in the house of a prostitute named Lahab. She was, promised, she was promised salvation if she hung a red cord on her window as a sign, ensuring the safety of her entire family and household. In Jericho, only those with the lead cord were saved, while those in houses without the lead cord perished. Canaan represents heaven. So, when we enter heaven, we also need this lead cord for our salvation. Joshua 2, 18 to 21. Unless when we come into the land, you tie this cord of scarlet thread in the window through which, let, which you let us down and gather to yourself into the house, your father and your mother and your brothers and all your father's household. So, the fall of Jericho represents the fall of Babylon which is a city of sinfulness, just like Jericho. Babylon symbolized the fallen world. The two spies in the story symbolize the two witnesses of the end times. They also represent the two angels sent to Sodom and Gomorrah as well as Jesus sending out his disciples in pairs to preach the word. The number two here is not about the quantity, but rather it represents those who testify and bear witness to the word of God. Revelation 11.8 and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which mystically is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. So these two witnesses can actually represent a group of people instead of just two individuals. This can be understood as a church that holds the secret knowledge about the fall of the world and they, the way to salvation. Those who enter and embrace this church will find life, while those who reject it will face destruction. Since we have encountered this church and its teachings, we have a living hope for our future. Abraham's cousin, Lot, Lot met the two angels at the, at the entrance of the gateway to the city. Genesis 19, 1. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening as Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. While many people saw, saw the angels, only Lot recognized them as angels because he had spiritual insight or awareness. Just like how Lot recognized the angels because he had spiritual understanding, 
we also need to have a strong spiritual connection to truly receive and understand God's word. It's like having special eyes that can see and understand things about God and our faith that others might miss. When we are more aware of our spiritual side, we can better understand the deeper meaning and importance of what God is telling us. It's like having a special ability, ability to see and appreciate the truths and messages that are beyond the surface level. The red cross symbolizes the seal of God. Revelation 9, 4. And they were told that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only the men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were told only not only harm those who without the seal of God on their foreheads. Foreheads means our minds and character because it is on our face. So we must totally be armed with the word and character in our minds and body. Revelation 7 Two, two, three. And I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to four angels, four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bond servants of our God on their foreheads. So, when we have the seal of God on our foreheads, we will be protected and safe. The harm will only come to earth after the sealing on our foreheads. We receive this seal by accepting, accepting and embracing God's word. It is important to know that the seed of God is not something we can physically see or touch, like a mark or a stamp. Instead, it represents our strong connection and loyalty to God on a deeper spiritual level. It shows that we are committed to Him <coughs> and have a close relationship with him. It's, so it's not about a physical seal, but about the spiritual bond we share with God. John 3, 33, he who has received this witness has set his seal to this that God is true. And when we see this verse in King James Version, he who has received his testimony has certi certified that God is true. So, the word certified here in King James Version of the Bible says, set his seal. In simpler terms, the word certified can also be underst understood as set his seal in other versions of the Bible. So, when, you, when we receive God's word, it's like receiving his seal of approval. But what exactly is the word we are talking about? It's the word that helps us to overcome difficult times and challenges. Just like Lord received this word and was able to leave Sodom and Lahab received it and escaped. We too receive this word to find deliverance from the destruction of the world. It's through embracing and following this word 
they can experience God's protection and guidance in our lives. So to summarize, first seal, seal of the Son of God, the blood of the Lamb. Second seal of the Holy Spirit, the Sabbath day. Third seal of God the Father, the red cord. Now we have been given the seal of God the Father. Not everyone in Jericho received the seal of God. Only Lahab and her family received salvation, while the rest of the people in Jericho perished. However, it's important to note that although Lahab received the red cord as a sign, her entire family may not have received it. So, in this world, there are three types of people, those who receive salvation, whether or not they have the red cord, those who receive neither salvation nor the red cord, and those who special, speci specifically receive both salvation and the red cord. So Lahab means first one, her family means second born. The seal of God was only given to the first born. If this secret is told to everyone, then everyone will know. So, seal only those who can keep the secret, because those are the ones who can save the second born. The second born do not have the red cord but they believe in Lahab, and so they are saved. Revelation 7, 4 And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of sons of Israel. The 144,000 received the seal of God. Revelation 14, 1 and I looked, and behold, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his name and the name of his Father written on their foreheads. Revelation 14, 4. These are ones who have not been defiled with women, for they have kept themselves chaste. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These have been purchased from among men as first fruit to God and to the Lamb. The 144,000 are the firstborn, and only they receive the seed of God. First fruits in verse 4 means firstborn. May we all receive the lead cord and sa save and be saved. However, it's important to note that the two spies were even greater than Laha. There's a difference between those who receive the seal of the lead cord and those who give the seal. Laha received the seal of God while the two spies gave the seal. The two spies are like the first one of the first one, representing the seal of God. Now, the seal is being given to us. We are the seal of the Father. Haggai 2.23 On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will make you Sherubabel, son of Sherti, my servant, declares the Lord and I will make you like a signet ring. For I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts. Here it says, I will make you like a signet ring. So if we are the seals, then we should stamp the seals everywhere, meaning we must keep the word of God. So in conclusion, Jesus is the seal of the Father. Jesus 
and the Father are one. John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. The Father has placed his seal on Jesus, and now he is giving us his authority. We are entrusted with the task of delivering the word of God. Specifically, the word of history of redemption series. When we say we are the seal of the Father, it means that he has given us the authority to seal things. Seals are used to make documents legal, such as in banks or when buying real estate. Seals are valuable because they have authority. A piece of paper with a seal with a seal is very different from one without a seal. For example, if we receive a letter, it's just a piece of paper. But when the big boss signs in it, it becomes precious and carries authority. John 6, 27, do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to an eternal life, which the Son of Man shall give to you, for on him the Father even God has set his seal. Jesus said, Father and Father and Jesus are one. So Jesus became the seal himself. If we really want to be the seal of Father, then we must be like the Father in all aspects. John 8, 39, they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. She just said to them, If you are Abraham's children, do the deeds of Abraham. It's not pretend to be like him, not deceiving, but doing his deeds and follow his word in our life. When it all becomes us, then we truly become the seal of Father and give out the seal and have authority. May we all be as one in authority and testify his word to the world. Romans 11, 18 to 21. Do not be arrogant toward the branches, but if you are arrogant, arrogant remember that it is not you who support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I might be crafted in. Quite right. They were broken off for their unbelief, but you stand by your faith. Do not be con concited but fear. For if, for if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Amen. Jesus strongly rebuked those who had a sense of self-righteousness, just like the Jews. If we also hear the word, but do not act upon it, we will face an even more fearsome judgment. Shiloh, I pray all of us live according to the word of God and being used by God as his instrument and to bear witness solely to Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you for granting us this precious day and enabling us to understand the message of the Bible. Thank you for allowing us to cross the Red Sea, pass through the wilderness, and enter the promised land of Canaan, the kingdom of heaven. Please make us receiving seed of the Lamb and the Holy Spirit and God the Father and all the members of Silo Missions obeying the word of God, living according to the word and proclaiming the word to every nation and people. We pray in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen.